one of the longest lasting and most famous Minecraft lives ever was Filza's Hardcore series, started in 2014. That is, it was, until it was tragically ended by a baby zombie five years later in 2019. In his Let's Play, apart from being entertaining, Filza focused on trying to stay alive for as long as possible. But what if we wanted to do the exact opposite? What if we wanted to stay alive for as short as possible? Minecraft has thousands of different features, and included in that are many different ways to die. But of all the tens, or even hundreds of methods, what is the fastest way to die in Minecraft? Well, YouTuber Alex Ace currently holds the fastest world record for death after loading in a world, at 1.6 seconds. It's impressive, sure, but it isn't really what we're searching for because we don't want to find the fastest death after logging into a world, instead, we want to find the fastest and somewhat most repeatable method to die whenever we like. I spent numerous hours thinking and looking into many different ways, and then held two trials. I tested each method twice, once with diamond armor, and once with no armor, and timed each one to the millisecond. Theoretically, the best death method is the one that takes the least time both with and without armor. Let's start fresh and first check out what Mother Nature has to offer. The Minecraft world is a very deadly place if you aren't careful, but let's just see how fast it is at killing you. Drowning yourself in water is a very simple way to game end yourself, but it's horribly slow, taking around 28.2 seconds to kill a player. In fact, with no armor, it's actually the slowest way to die in Minecraft. The one thing going for it is that it takes the same time regardless of your armor. However, berries and cacti don't fare as well. While they are both decently fast at killing a naked player at 11.12 and 12 seconds respectively, with diamond armor on, they nearly tie for the slowest method in the game, with berry bushes taking 57.2 seconds and cacti taking the cake at a painfully long 58 seconds of pricking. However, we're forgetting one method, it's the obvious, fall damage, the exact thing used by Ace in his speedrun. Here, Mother Earth redeems herself, taking only 0.36 seconds to fall 24 blocks, the smallest distance that can kill, give or take a few milliseconds, and this is both with and without armor considering you don't have feather falling. Falling into the void, however, even at the lowest Y level in the Ender Overworld, doesn't kill you instantly. And while it is consistent with and without armor, it still takes 4.84 seconds to kill a player. Fast, sure, but not fast enough. Lava is very hot, and jumping into it in real life would almost certainly be lethal no matter the circumstances, not to mention extremely painful. In its defense, in Minecraft, lava is pretty fast at killing you, allowing one to game end themselves in only 2.04 seconds. Sadly though, with armor, that jumps up to 13 seconds, but regardless, neither times can compare to fall damage. And on the topic of fire, lighting yourself with a flint and steel is a very painful and very slow way to go out, taking 11.64 seconds with and without armor. Funnily enough, while doing the flint and steel test, I actually found it was slightly faster with armor, so I just assumed I screwed up and applied the fast time to both methods. Or maybe Minecraft is just coded so that you feel like uncomfortable suffocating in your burning armor. Speaking of suffocation, digging up into sand or gravel is one of the most embarrassing and easy ways to die in Minecraft. To replicate it, I made a small machine to suffocate my player. And while it was consistent, it was disappointingly slow, taking 11.12 seconds or just as fast as a berry bush. So, Mother Nature is pretty merciless and extraordinarily quick with methods like lava and fall damage that are going to be pretty tough to beat. But let's see what we can do. Let's try out some more industrial methods. Game ending oneself with an anvil is a comical and pretty brutal way to go out, and repeatedly placing anvils on yourself can kill in just 3.6 seconds, without armor that is. To speed this up, I introduced a contraption that dropped two anvils very quickly, 
allowing me to lower that time to 1.92 seconds, nearly cutting it in half. With armor, however, it's a different story. While placing anvils on your stuff only takes 11.12 seconds, which is a number we're running into quite a bit for some reason, it only takes this short because our helmet actually gets broken by the anvils. Had the armor not broken, or worse, been unbreakable by commands, this would have taken absolute ages. And needless to say, our two anvil dropper doesn't even kill with diamond armor on. Minecraft has a handful of generated structures, two of the oldest and most famous being the Desert Pyramid and the Jungle Temple. The Desert Pyramid is famous in speedruns, and who doesn't love finding one in their Minecraft world? They have all sorts of core rewards, like diamonds, golden apples, and enchanted books. Most players will be familiar with the trap at the center of the pyramid. It's a simple TNT trap. TNT. From ignition to death, TNT takes exactly 4 seconds to kill the player, both with and without armor on, adding to the lethality of pyramids. Quick, but not quick enough. The jungle temple is really cool, it's filled with traps and puzzles. But what kind of traps exactly? Dispenser traps. More specifically, arrows firing from dispensers. Setting up a little contraption that pelts you with arrows results in a decent time of 5.24 seconds without armor, and a pretty slow time of 24.08 seconds with diamond armor. But arrows aren't the only thing that can fill dispensers, and swapping them out for fireballs lowers the time to 3.28 seconds naked and 14.52 seconds armored. But we're forgetting something. Arrows have the ability to be tipped with effects, and adding new harming arrows into the mix takes only 1.04 seconds to kill without armor and 1.72 with. That's fast, and nearly our best time too. Speaking of harming, all harming effects bypass armor, and you can spam splash potions on yourself pretty fast, and game end in just 0.64 seconds, or just a stack of milliseconds. Drinking is a lot slower, at 4.48 seconds, again with and without armor. Using a lingering potion may seem like a good idea at first, but in reality it only takes a whopping 3.68 seconds, and it isn't really worth it. Same with the harming station I made, which is pretty fast at 1.76 seconds, but still three times slower than just splashing yourself. Found in the end, the elytra is one of my favorite items in the game, and one of the best ones in my opinion, enabling the user to soar around in the sky. But if you aren't careful, you could die by hitting something too hard. Strangely enough, no matter how far and how fast I went, I never could die, although this might be a mistake on my part. My best attempt was this strange double hit thing, which did kill me at a decent 2.56 seconds, but was absolutely useless with armor on. That being said, a more recreatable method, flying into the sky and then plummeting back down, only took 1.6 seconds, with and without armor, and starting on a ledge only took 1.28. But what about fireworks themselves? Used to propel you in flight, Fireworks can actually be pretty deadly if you're not careful. Shooting a firework from the creative menu at yourself does nothing, and crafting it with a firework star doesn't do anything either. It's only when you add a design like a die to the firework star that it begins to do damage, increasing depending on how many stars you add in the original crafting. One max firework deals 17 damage in one go. That's a lot of damage, and while it takes 1.36 seconds with armor, and 3.04, there's something strange. It's at this point where we run into a little quirk of Minecraft that is super important when discussing damage. When we spam fireworks or set up a dispenser station with two dispensers, it should kill. It's 17 damage from each firework, but it doesn't. In fact, it only deals as much damage as if there were only one dispenser. Well, why is this? The answer? Iframes. After getting hit by an attack, there is a half second period where a player is invulnerable to attacks. That is why attacking at 15 CPS, for example, won't register every single hit. However, there is a way around this. In the Minecraft wiki, it is stated that if an attack dealing greater damage than the first happens in the iframe, the damage isn't nullified completely, 
but the original damage is subtracted from the second hit. To model this, I made a graph of the damage dealt by two firework rockets. The Y value, this line, represents the total damage of the graph, and once the damage reaches this line, or 20, it will kill with no armor. So what's this point where it kills? Well, sadly, it never gets there. Because this is the line of damage of two fireworks. This is because the X value in this case is the number of firework stars that can fit in one rocket. And that number can only be an integer 1 through 7 because those are the number of available slots in a crafting table. Quite the bummer. In theory, you would need 8.5 firework stars to kill a player, but obviously, that wouldn't fit in a crafting table. But this brings up an interesting point, because now, let's look at the damage of the second rocket alone. It's identical to the total damage. What I've learned, which is also confirmed with some very basic algebra, is that even if 50 attacks happen at once, each doing more damage than the other, if they all happen in the iframe, the only damage that matters is the last attack. So because a firework can't kill in one shot, even if we shot 1 million fireworks at once, if they were all in the same invulnerability frame, it would only deal 17 damage. This iframe principle comes up a lot, so do keep it in mind as it's very important. We can use a special redstone torch circuit to skip past the iframes, but it still takes 1.28 seconds without armor and 3.44 with, so it's actually slower, but that's probably my error. Speaking of blowing yourself up, however, TNT minecarts. TNT minecarts are perhaps one of the fastest ways to kill a player and are super, super powerful. The fastest way I know of to detonate one is to make it fall three blocks, and breaking the block plus detonation takes 1.32 seconds regardless of armor. Using redstone, we can shorten it to only 0.92 seconds, which is very fast, but we can go even further by using an efficiency 5 enchanted netherite shovel, which only takes 0.68 seconds to detonate, just twice as slow as fall damage. But that isn't all you can do with minecarts. Used in traps and farms, entity cramming is a method of quickly killing anything regardless of armor. Placing a ton of minecarts on one rail or in one hole will cause anything with them to start taking heavy damage, completely disregarding armor. It only takes 1.68 seconds after hopping into a pit of minecarts for me to game end myself. This method is also very usable and very small, but it's certainly not as quick as fall damage, or even TNT minecarts for that matter. Minecraft is a multiplayer game. Obviously, it's one of its best selling points, and one of the biggest concepts found in multiplayer minigames is PvP. So what if you had a friend game end you? How long would that take? Well, sadly, I don't have any friends, so we'll have to turn to Minecraft's mobs to game end me instead. My first in instinct, for some reason, was to try out Wither's Skeletons. They give off this pretty deadly vibe, I guess, so I stuck four of them in a rhombus and jumped in the middle. The time it took to kill me was 2.96 seconds without armor, and 10.08 seconds with diamond armor. Pretty fast, but strangely enough, I noticed that while they were all swinging, it only looked like one was taking damage, which is yet another example of the iframe effect at work. Speaking of withering, wither roses takes 11.12 seconds to kill, but are a pretty stylish way of game ending yourself if I do say so myself. The ender dragon is the final boss of the game, and killing it means you've technically beaten Minecraft, but an accomplishment this great isn't easily earned. One of the dragon's newer attacks is its fireball breath, which kills you extremely fast if you aren't careful. 4.04 seconds with and without diamond armor. But what about the strongest mob in the game? Well, what is the strongest mob in the game actually? Technically, the charged creeper deals the most damage, but the time it takes for it to ignite raises its time to 1.16 seconds. A lot of you may think it's the pillager beast because it's immense and I thought so too actually, but we'd both be wrong. 
In fact, the strongest melee mob in the game is actually a tie between the new Piglin Brute and the Illager. Hopping in with a Piglin Brute takes 1.12 seconds without armor and 5.44 with, so I guess it's comparable to the Charged Creeper, which kills consistently on both. Hopping into a pit of 16 Piglin Brutes is even faster, at 0.64 seconds without armor and 4.16 with, a near instant naked death. So, mobs are good, but not good enough to pass fall damage, as even the most powerful mob can't do it. Or can they? Because there is, in fact, a way to get an even more powerful mob than a Piglin Brute. And that's by mimicking a player even more. A Sharp 5, Fire Aspect 2, and Netherite Axe is insanely strong, but there's no mob in the game that uses that weapon. But there can be, because we can give this axe to a regular zombie, and suddenly it just becomes a brain dead player. However, it doesn't even matter because it can't one shot us and still takes 1.4 seconds and 4.04 seconds with and without armor, respectively. However, we can take it one step further and splash Strength 2 on the zombies. And now it's a one hit. This makes things deadly and fun. Now the zombie can kill a naked player in one hit, and takes 0.28 seconds to kill without armor and 2.8 with, faster than fall damage with the first regard. Throwing ourselves into a pit without armor wouldn't make a difference because it's instant pretty much, but a pit of 16 OP strength zombies can game end you in 1.92 seconds. That's fast. Very fast. The end I mention is the final stage of Minecraft and the final stage of our video. When you throw an ender pearl, you take damage, and throwing one back and forth can game end you in a measly 4.56 seconds regardless of armor. That's okay, but we can do better. An ender pearl stasis chamber is a contraption that holds an ender pearl for you, and when you activate it, you can teleport to your tower or wherever the stasis chamber is as long as the pearl is in a loaded chunk. So, setting up five of them should theoretically kill if they were all activated. I thought this was going to be an instant kill, but because of the iframes, we now have to time it, and it ends up taking 2.92 seconds, or nearly 3 seconds to game end yourself with a quintuple stasis chamber. Which definitely has the coolest name on our list, if nothing else. But, the end has one more trump card. Beds. Used to set your spawn and save it when you die, which is quite ironic, beds are a special utility when used in the nether or end. They explode when you try to sleep with them. No one knows why. But what do we know? It's an instant death. To be completely honest, I'm not sure how long it takes, it's pretty much simultaneous. The moment you right click, you're gone, so I guess it's just as fast as your mouse can register. Which is very fast, and I can assume it's faster than the strength zombie. Probably. And it's a much more portable method as well, although it doesn't work in the overworld, whereas the zombie one works in every single dimension. Sure, it can all be negated if you place a block in front of you, but it's still perhaps one of the most powerful forces in all of Minecraft. Killing regardless of armor. No matter what you have on, you will die if you try to sleep in a bed in the nether end. It's pretty much a manual slash kill command. Yes, there are also end crystals, but they pretty much do the same thing as beds and can't even kill with armor on, so nobody cares. So, to my knowledge, the bed and these are the fastest way to kill in Minecraft, with the leaderboard on screen right now. Some extra numbers for you nerds out there, the average time it took to kill without armor was 3.97 seconds and 8.76 with diamond armor on. The worst ratio of speeds was the pit of 16 piglin brutes, whose diamond armor test took 6.5 times longer than naked. But that's all I have to share with you today, do consider subscribing if you did enjoy, stay alive out there, and as always, peace out, have a good one.